Friends, let us learn divide and conquer technique of effect emulsification through this video. After application of povidone iodine, the ocular surface is thoroughly irrigated with BSS or ringolactic. And now, the main incision. This is a steel keratome 2.8 millimeter. The main incision is at mid limbus. I always include some capillaries and let it bleed a bit. Healing becomes better if we include some capillaries in the incision. A side port has been made on the right side of the main incision. In this case, my plan is to use bimanual irrigation aspiration. After injecting an air bubble, tripan blue dye is applied over the ocular surface. This is a bit of adrenaline and now the dye is washed out. And now the antechamber is again filled up with viscoelastic substance. In this case it is 2 percent hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. One more side port is made on the left side of the main incision. So, in this case we have two side ports and one main incision. And now capsulorexis. Let us do it with a needle in this case. In size, pull the capsule, flip this capsular tag. So, your needle is on the under surface of the capsular tag. The capsular tag is guided all around and a fairly round adequate size trexis is achieved. I usually do it with uh, uterita forceps and nowadays with uterita I do it faster. Hydrodissection, BSS is injected just under the anterior capsular rim and then the nucleus is tapped. The nucleus is mobile but it did not rotate freely. Once I make out that the nucleus is free from its capsule, I can bimanually rotate it. Stress on the genule becomes less if we rotate the nucleus bimanually. Some more visco and now is the time to introduce the FECO needle. The machine being used is Faro's from Oatly and I am going to do the divide and conquer technique in this case. Some superficial lens matter is aspirated so that we get good visibility. Now the handpiece is turned to make the bevel up and I am ready to do the trenches. See at this time the eyeball should be in primary position. The eyeball should not tilt. Any air bubble aspirate the air bubbles and gradually sculpt when you go forward use ultrasonic energy. Do not use ultrasonic energy when you come backward. I rotate the nuclear mass 180 degree and sculpt on the other side. Go to a deeper plane. Ultrasonic energy is 60 percent in this case. Flow rate is 25 and vacuum is 80. 
this is sculpting perpendicular to the initial trench, so that we get a plus sign. Must not make a bowl, should be two trenches intersecting each other at 90 degree. And the trenches should be sufficiently deep, about 80 percent depth and only faint red glow should be visible at the floor. It is done and after applying opposing forces, we can crack the nucleus into several fragments. Beginners can do it with two instruments. It may be easier, these instruments are thin, go to the floor and applying, apply opposite forces. With two hooks, you can easily separate the pieces, crack and separate. And now, tilt and bring the apex out of the capsula bag, the apices projecting into the anterior chamber. Inject visco and introduce the phaco needle again. For emulsification and removal of the quadrants, the ultrasonic energy is same about 60 percent, flow rate is 40 and vacuum is 400 with this machine. Beginners can use lower vacuum and lower flow rate, but with lower vacuum and lower flow rate, the, it is slower emulsification and followability is less when the, when the flow rate is less, followability of the pieces is less. We can easily place the other two pieces, inject visco and using two instruments, we can bring the pieces out of the capsular bag, just lift it up from the capsular bag, the inner part, the apical portion of the triangular pieces. And now, go again, take on piece and emulsify. Smaller pieces should be removed first because they go here and there and hit the corneal endothelium. At this time, the vacuum is reduced to 200 and flow rate 20 and the last bead of the nucleus is removed. In this case, we can see that the cortex is almost removed. This is because we rotated the nucleus clockwise and anticlockwise several times. So, the cortex from 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock is already removed. Only the cortex on the left side from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, this portion is removed. You can use by manual IA, but this is not necessary for this small amount of cortex. We can easily remove this with a Simco cannula. It is very safe. Inject some visco in the anterior chamber and first go to the nuclear material, start aspirating. Let the other parts of the anterior chamber be filled up with visco. In that way, the maintenance of the anterior chamber is good you do not hit the corneal endothelium, the antechamber does not collapse immediately. Now, for implantation of the intraocular lens, the main wound has been enlarged little bit. It was initially 2.8 millimeter, now it is about 3 millimeter. And now, a B cartridge is used to implant a hydrophobic acrylic single piece 
monofocal intraocular lens. The lens has gone in the capsular bag. If one haptic is outside the capsular bag, you can dial it, dial and press at the haptic optic junction and it goes into the capsular bag. With Simco, I am irrigating some BSCs in the antechamber as well as behind the intraocular lens and by this maneuvers lot of visco comes out. Now I take bimanual irrigation aspiration, irrigate the capsular bag, go behind the intraocular lens and irrigate the capsular bag, irrigate the anterior chamber. And now using bimanual irrigation aspiration, remove the remaining visco and it is done nicely. This is a bit of moxifloxacin and now the side ports are closed by hydrating corneal stroma. Be careful hydrate the scleral side of the side ports and gently only small amount of fluid inject Otherwise, there can be decimates membrane detachment. This is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is nicely formed. And now the integrity of all the wounds are checked. Few drops of moxie is applied over the ocular surface and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in learning the divide and conquer technique, the basic technique with which every fresh postgraduate eye surgeon should start phaco emulsification. You get to know your machine, you develop your foot control, you develop your hand movements and this is the basic technique for learning phaco emulsification.